When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zachariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, no, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue free, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord is with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Of people at Simbangami, 
here are some of the ones that we can expect. The first group, yung mga binata na kasama ang kanyang mga tropa. The teenage boys accompanied by his peeps. Okay? In the Philippines, you will see that. Because what are they doing? Kung minsan nasa, nasa paligid na sila ng simbahan. At first, they're at the side, at, at the side. But then, one of them sees the girl he likes. And then, this is what happens. Teenage boy, surrounded by his friends. Uy, pre, pre! Nandun na yung crush mo. And so what does he do? Uy, nandun na yung crush mo. So, nagdadasal, nagpapanal-panala. Okay? He makes it a point to try and impress that girl. Because he wants to make sure that she, that she, that one, she notices him, that she sees him in church, and that he's praying, that he might be a good person, and that she might say yes to dating him. So that's the first group that we might see as in the baby. The second group is what we in the Philippines call the chismosa. <laughs> They beat social media because they are faster in terms of finding out all the juicy details about everyone's life. And they are faster in terms of spreading the news. So they will be seen in the church. And then someone, one of their neighbors comes in and they go, I'm they are quick to pass on all the juicy gossip about everyone in the town. Then, there are yung mga nagpapalalaki. Yung mga lalaki, yung mga ama, na nakahatin sa kanilang pamilya sa simbahan. Pero sa halit na pumasok sila sa simbahan at sa mga kanila ang kanilang pamilya, nasan sila? Nasa labas ng simbahan, nagkukaituhan, nagiinuman, nagsusugal, everything, nagluyusi, everything except going into church and joining their family of mass. These are men who think that faith and church are only for the mothers and the children. So after they bring their family to the church, they will go outside and do all sorts of things until the mass is over. That's the next, that's the third group that we might see at, at, at Simbalde. The next one. Yung mga tao, akala nga nila na sila ay sa palengke. What do I mean? These are people who think they are at the marketplace because they are bargaining with God, trying to get the best deal. Lord, Manalo lang sana ako sa lottery at bibigyan ka na ng 50%. Sige na, Lord. Sige na. Alam naman din yun ang nasa, nasa pagkikita na ko. Sige na. Pero kung manalo ako sa lottery, sa bahay, 30% na lang sa iyo, 70% sa akin. They will bargain with God, trying again to get the best deal, trying to wear God down, hoping that he will answer them in a way that they would like it. Now, if you think that I'm only picking on the ordinary people, seminarians are bad. <laughs> because this is, their, this is their style. Seminarians will fight one another to accompany certain priests. So, sabihin nila, boy, sino ang kasama ni, sino ang kasama ng pare? Sino ang sino kasama ni Father Kalimdanan? The seminarians know that each day of the Simpangabi, the priest gets a lot of gifts. And they know that the priest 
priest doesn't keep all the gifts. He'll keep alcohol, of course. <laughs> He'll keep money, of course. But sometimes they will get an expensive t-shirt, they might get a watch, they might get a, a, a smartphone or something like that. At the moment of seminary stuff, mati nung nasila. The seminarians are very smart because they will want to be assigned to a particular priest as their altar servers. And gigising na sila ng maglalasa ng ganun kaata for nine days just to go with just to go with what that particular priest. Why? Because at the ninth day, the priest will tell them, "Oh, mga samadrista, sa inyo na lang ang mga binal." So in other words, you, uh, you, uh, you go ahead and divide up all these gifts. And so they get those good gifts that the priest gets. And so they want those things. And so they will make sure, again, they will wake up for nine days straight, early hours of the morning, just to be able to, do, to be the first ones to grab the, the nicest gifts that Father gets. And again, and, uh, and lastly, yung mga pare. Don't, uh, don't think that we priests are, are, are exempt from this. Okay? For nine mornings, for those of you who know, who know the custom, for nine mornings, every priest in the Philippines has to get up super early just to celebrate the Sibandabi Mass. For nine mornings, magdere klamo asila. They will complain, oh, why do I have to get up this early? Oh, dun, 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 dun. But at the end, bibilangin na nila ang kanila mga talenti. They know with every envelope they get, that, hmm, makapal ito ng sobre. The envelope is thick. There should be a good amount of money in there. And they will wait for these key words. Father, this is for you. Meaning, not for the parish, not that he doesn't care about the parish, but if he hears the word, Father, this is for you. Alam niya, hmm, sa akin ito. Okay? And again, he will open the envelope at bibilangin niya kung makano ang natanggap niya talagang niya. He will count, and then he will rejoice that after nine days, that is his added bonus for Christmas. So those are some of the people that we find that we might find in the uh, during this month of May. We come to us. What about us? What kind of people have we been during these nine days? Have we been coming just to get someone's attention? Have we been coming trying to be the center of attention? Have we been coming talking about everyone else instead of praying? Have we come focused on the envelopes and the stuff inside them? We are celebrating 500 years of Catholicism in the Philippines. And so Filipinos have, have been in a relationship with Jesus for that long. And we look at dioceses in the United States. And they are, and virtually none of them are that old. None of them have, have come to be a 500 years. We have been proclaiming Jesus for that long. We have had the gift of faith and discipleship for five centuries. So hopefully, as we have come each night of this novena, and how, no matter how many nights we may have made, hopefully we have, we have been coming as people who recognize their gift of faith and share the gift of discipleship. And we can learn lessons from this custom for, for that very reason. From the very beginning, this custom began as an effort to catechize and evangelize. To evangelize, to help people recognize the presence of God. To recognize God by the way we live and do and by the way we live and know that the way we live will attract others or keep others apart. If others see in us the joy of being disciples, they will want to join us. 
But if they, if others look at us and see people who are not, who are, who are not who they say, who we say we are, why would they want to join us? And it is to catechize, to teach the faith. Parents, you are the first teachers of the faith. You are responsible, responsible for the teaching of the faith to your children. But again, as parents, if your children do not see the impact the faith has on you, they will, no matter how much you force them, they may end up stop. They may end up not practicing the faith because they will, they will look at you and think, "What good is it? What good is it?" That my parents don't change. They're the same people. They're crappy. They're they're, they're this and that. So why should I believe? Emphasize a relationship of love between us and God, and we realize that we will grow in the faith and in our job as catechists. The parole lanterns that we so love at this time of year, we know that they are symbolic of the star of Bethlehem, but they also serve a practical purpose, and that purpose teaches us that another lesson. Because the practical purpose of the parole lanterns was to enlighten, uh, enlighten the dark streets. Remember, 500 years ago, when this custom was, it was pretty much initiated, there was no electricity in any of the streets in the Philippines. So how were people able to find their way to church? People would put these lanterns in front of their homes and guide their way to, to, to the church where they will encounter Christ. People, brothers and sisters, we need to also light the way for one another. We need to show people where they can encounter God. And we need to be that encounter with God. And this Nabina is also a way to honor the Virgin Mary because this is the last few days of her pregnancy. She allowed the life of God to fill her. And she had the confidence to say yes to God. We also, again, need to let God's life grow in us just as a child grows in the womb of its, of its mother and have the confidence to say yes to God so that we can go out into the world and evangelize. The pre-dawn time of the Mass, of course, here we have adapted the custom. Instead of celebrating Mass at 4 a.m. for nine days, we we moved it to the evening. But in the Philippines, again, it's at, 4, it's at 4 a.m. for nine consecutive days. And we know that that was the time to accommodate fishermen who were coming in from work and farmers who were going out. But it is also symbolic of the last moments of darkness before the light of dawn. And so it becomes a reminder to us that even in the darkness, we can proclaim the light of Christ. Even in the dark times, God's light will always break through. And there is also, of course, the more festive spirit of the nine days, the nine day of Eden. <laughs> and it reminds us to be a people of joy, to be a people who know that God is with us, to be a people who see God in every time, place, and, and person. And so what kind of people ought to be, ought to come to see what we the type who come to experience God. The type who come to share God. The type who come to make disciples for God. Again, this custom is almost as old as Catholicism itself in the Philippines. And this Eucharist makes us into the people who see God's presence. And this Eucharist makes us into God's presence. And so let us share that gift with everyone we meet everyone we know, so that all people will see the glory and the salvation that only God can bring.